YouTube, what's going on? This is going to be a Tomica limited vintage showcase, including some limited vintage Neo cars like this one here. This car does not belong to me. It is not part of my collection. I'm not going to pull it out. I haven't touched the casting. I'm not going to, but that is for uh, a subscriber of the channel. I picked that up for him. But this is just to show you how they are packaged. It's similar to Auto World. Um, but a uh, little bit more packaging. The car gets completely encased in the uh, plastic. So that's kind of how they look uh, packaged, uh, well, in the packaging. So these cars are not officially sealed from the factory. All right. The case is sealed, but once the case is cracked, that's that's it. So I'm going to show you guys uh, my TLV collection. We just looked at Kyosho. So this is a Toyota Land Cruiser with a Japanese radio station deco. I would like to get a civilian deco, but they are pretty pricey. I think 40 to 50 is the starting point for the civilian deco. And uh, even this one isn't necessarily cheap. Over here we have a Nissan Safari. Great looking truck. Uh, here we have a Toyota Town Ace van. Right here we have a Toyota Corona and a Toyota Celica. Here's a Honda CRX. I believe this is the first generation CRX. This is a Mazda Luce. We have a Nissan Prairie. This car was a United States model known as the uh, Nissan Stanza Wagon. So far, this one, this one, and this one are the only that cars that were available in the U.S. I think this one might have been, but it would have had a different name. Maybe like a 626 or something like that. I'm not 100% positive on that. It looks really familiar though. So I feel like it was a car that was available here, but um, I'm not sure. I know this car was not. This is a Nissan Skyline. C210 with the four door, uh, also known as the Japan Skyline. And then behind it here, we have a Honda Prelude. This would be right around a 1985 model. Might be 83 though. I get it confused with the Konami. Really cool little car though. All right, so here we have the Toyota Carina. You can see these cars, a lot of them have fingerprints. I probably should have wiped them off first, but uh, this is an older 
TLV release. So this one can fetch a little bit more than your average TLV car. A lot of times it's based on the age, just because the older they are, the harder they are to find. And with Tomica Limited Vintage, unlike Hot Wheels, um, with Hot Wheels, you have a date on the base, which is the copyright date, which is the date the casting was created. The date on TLVs, from what I've noticed, is the date that the car came out. So this one came out in 08. So basically, if they took this same tooling and brought it out this year, the base would say 2018. That is the way I understand it, um, just based on my observation of collecting. If anybody has anything to add to that, um, I would love to hear what you have to say. So this is a Toyota Crown Wagon. Uh, this is another one that is not mine. This Nissan GTR belongs to the same person as that yellow RX-7. I don't have a GTR casting currently, and I have these in my possession temporarily, so I wanted to show one of these. Um, I think I might have to get myself one of these silver GTRs. It's just unbelievably nice. I really do believe these are the nicest GTR castings available in the scale, and that includes brands like Oversteer. These GTRs have suspension, prototypical wheels, they're scaled so correct, they're proportioned very correct. Just awesome cars. Um, okay. This is a Mitsubishi Galant. Awesome little car. TLV is known to do some real... Um, like if you're a fan of oddball stuff, Tomica Limited Vintage definitely has their fair share. Although this one I wouldn't consider oddball. Some of these need to be changed. Uh, so this is a C110 Skyline, also known as the Hakoska. Great looking car. Uh, this car has been released in multiple colors. Everything from red to green to silver. And then this color here, which is my personal favorite. Uh, this car had a couple of alternate uh, colors as well. And most of these do because uh, TLV is pretty much like other brands where most of their cars will have alternate colors unless it's a car like this which came out in a, as a special uh, release. I don't know what the terminology is for it. But those cars are only put out in one color. And basically the reason for that is because they're based off of actual cars from Japanese television or cinema. But I love this. This is one of my favorite castings in my entire collection, this 260Z. It's a car that uh, a lot of brands have tried, have made their attempts at this car. And nobody has done it even close to as nice as Tomica Limited Vintage. All right, so uh, this is the EK9. I believe it's a 1998 Honda Civic Type R. This had two releases with two alternate colors in each release. So... Initially, it came out in white and silver, 
and then it came out later in black and yellow. All four cars have the same six spoke white wheels, or seven spoke rather. One of my favorite cars. The newest to my collection is this 1991 Mazda RX-7. Uh, this came out in two colors, uh, one being silver and then the other one back there being yellow. And that's its initial release. Now the red one here is a different release. It's similar, same type of release as this uh, 260Z. The packaging on them looks like this. So this is the inner. That's the inner box. And then this is the uh, outer box here. And then this just folds open. It has a little window. So these releases like this are only available in the one color. The card art on this thing is sick. Uh, collectible in its own right. So anyways, uh, I grabbed these two. Thought about getting a yellow one, but uh, a good possibility I may trade the red one here. Um, still contemplating. Uh, this is a Nissan Skyline R33 four-door. Amazing detail. The wheels are incredible. All of these wheels are pretty incredible, though. This is a Toyota Century. Um, this is the largest Tomica Limited vintage car in my collection. It is larger than... Um, the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Nissan Safari. Very big car. I uh, would almost probably classify this as a limo. But I don't know. Let's see if we can get a close up of these wheels. Just amazing detail. And then last is the Toyota Crown Royal. which is another very new casting in my collection, just acquired yesterday with the uh, Mazda RX-7s. So that's it, Tomoka Limited Vintage and Limited Vintage Neo. <clears throat> in one to 64 scale, these are probably the most expensive cars to collect. Uh, with Kyosho, I said the average is 20 and the range is anywhere from 10 to 50. These ones, the average is probably 25 to 30. If you're lucky, you might be able to find one in the 18 range. Some of the lesser desirable models. But all of the more desirable models are going to be 25 to 35 to start out. And then they're going to go up from there. Uh, like this silver 260 is probably a 70 to $80 car at this point. And there are people on eBay trying to get between 150 and 200 for it. I, don't, I definitely don't think it's worth that, but um, it's, uh, I got it early, not too long after it came out because the date on the base of this one is 2010 but I got it initially a couple of years ago and then I traded it and then I traded for it back and uh, all of a sudden it, it just became a car that you can't find like you can't go to eBay and scoop this car up because it's just not on there um, the last one that I saw listed on there was buy it now for 225 and so it's just really hard to gauge the value on these cars but anytime you want to get a value of a car just go to eBay check completed listings because that'll show you what people are paying for 
whichever car you're looking at. Uh, these RX-7s are some of the newest toolings from TLV. Uh, the EK-9 is a pretty new tooling. So a lot of awesome stuff. It's a great brand. Well, a lot of people complain about these and say that they're not worth it. And that's just nonsense. But it all depends on what you like. Uh, basically, it's a choice, you know. Would you rather have one of these or 25 mainline Hot Wheels? Personally, I would rather have one of these. Or the other side of it would be, would you rather have one of these or three green lights? And, you know, that's kind of what you're measuring. So anyways, uh, great brand. The best detail, hands down. No one else really comes close other than Kyosho. Certainly none of the American brands come close. Um, they're hard to get if you guys live here in the U.S. like I do. These are not commercially available in this country, so you have to go to second-party sources. I get a lot of this from the Toy Pimp. In fact, I would say most of this came from the Toy Pimp, but there are a few that I picked up, um, like the Galat I picked up in a trade. Um, I picked up the Corona off of eBay. I picked up the Silver 260Z from Japan Booster. Japan Booster is the best source. I would say if there's a Kyosho or a TLV car that you want, start with Japan Booster if they have it. It's a trusted source. They ship uh, international priority with tracking. But a lot of times um, they sell out quick or they may not have what you're looking for. But I always recommend starting out with Japan Booster. Start out with the Toy Pimp because he's local and he has a ton of stuff, especially with uh, Tomica, Tomica Basic, Tomica Premium, and Tomica Limited Vintage. So start with him. If he doesn't have it, then go to Japan Booster. And if he doesn't have it, then you can start looking at the, the other third party, uh, less known dealers of this die cast. So that's it. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, comment below and I'll holler at the next video, which may or may not be Konami.